The truth is, anyone can afford anything if they want it bad enough. Your job is to make sure that you present your services and your products in a way which is sales. Business is not business without sales and marketing. You can have the best product or service in the world. If you don't know how to sell it, nobody's gonna buy it. We'll get onto that later. I'll do other videos about that later. But here's the thing. Your job is to make sure that you tell the story about your business, your service, your product in such a way that you create a desire in your customers to give you money so that they can receive what it is that you have. That is your job. How are you presenting your business to your customers? You need to be presenting it as if it is valuable. You need to believe and have the confidence to know that what you have is worth the money that you're asking for. There's a book called Thou Shalt Prosper written by Rabbi Daniel Lappin. And in this book, it talks about the importance of understanding that money is a good thing. Money is a tool, but it is you, it can be used for good. And how it teaches how the media and culture has taught us subliminally that money is evil, that everyone who has money or who's trying to get money is somehow doing something wrong or there's some twisted motive behind it all. But the truth of the matter is money answers all things. You can't get anything done out here unless you have resources. And in this book, it talks about how money is like a certificate given to the entrepreneur or the business owner by the customer to say, thank you, I am satisfied with this service or product. Thank you so much. So money actually is a certificate of happiness and satisfaction from your customer. So if you are a servant leader, if you're truly a leader at heart and a servant at heart, it should be your goal to get as many of these little certificates as you can because it's proof that you have a quality product and a quality service. So don't serve out of lack, serve from a place of strength and leadership. There are a couple of things that you need to understand and shift your mindset about in order to move forward with this. And then you can help your customers do the same thing. Money is not evil. Although evil people can get money and do terrible things with it, money itself is not evil. Number two, it's good to charge money for your services. Charging not only takes care of you and your family and keeps you happy and excited about the work that you do instead of miserable, but charging also teaches your customers how to value your products and your services. So it's very important to charge not only just anything, but charge a good amount of money. Number three, not only is it good to charge, but it's good to pay. It's good to have the money to pay for what you want. Nothing makes me happier than to know that I have the money to pay for whatever it is that I need. And when I hand it over, I know that all of my bills are still paid. No lights are gonna be shut off because I've worked hard and I've earned the right to spend the money that I spend. All of this, money's not evil, it's good to charge, it's good to pay, leads me to number four. Learn to talk about, receive, and give money with ease. Be fluent. You know how people talk about being fluent in a certain language, well money is the language, and you'll see that in my next book. But you need to be fluent with money. Money is nothing to be afraid of. We shouldn't be afraid to say what our prices are. We shouldn't be afraid to pay people what they're asking. And we shouldn't be afraid to talk about the money that we want. I would suggest if it makes you uncomfortable raising your prices, if it makes you uncomfortable talking about things like this, to start doing it consistently. There's nothing wrong with talking about money. There's nothing wrong with moving money around, asking for money, and giving money freely. The next thing I want you to do is to address your fears about raising your prices. Why are you really afraid? If you're concerned that your customers and members, the members of your organization will not support you raising prices, is it possible that you could be deflecting your own fears about this 
and assuming that they will not pay you more just because you don't believe either that you deserve more or you think that they look at money the same way that you do. I'm not saying that's the case, but let's just make sure that that's not it. Now, number two, accept that as you elevate, some customers simply will not go with you and that's okay. It's okay if not all of your customers come with you because what's most important is that you establish a business and an organization of your dreams, that you establish something that's going to make you proud, that's going to build a legacy. And in order to do that, you're going to have to grow. You're going to have to progress. And not all of your customers are going to be able to take that journey with you all the way to the end. And that's okay. Some will stay and elevate with you. Some will fall off because they're not supposed to go further with you. And guess what? Some new ones will come. Number three, get excited about all of the new customers and members that you haven't even met yet. Our own discomfort with the idea of change can keep us from doing anything that will cause us to progress and we end up sabotaging our business. Change is good. You cannot grow or improve without change. And most times when you're growing and improving and changing, your circles will change, your customers will change, your members will change. It's all a part of the process.